Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Heartache out of Louisville, Kentucky after a gunman opened fire in a bank, killing at least five people. The latest coming up. And waking up with live cam this morning, you'll find it a little cool at 56 degrees. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see when we could expect a little bit of a warm up. Good morning, everybody. We jump right into our Tuesday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Monday. Uh, for me, it was just like it looked like it was going to rain all day, but it didn't at least. What about you? Sun eventually came out. Oh, yes. And yes. overnight we've had some clouds, but like you saw yesterday morning, Mike, the moon, the moon is out. Yeah, I, I walked out my back door this morning mm -hmm. and there was nothing but clear skies out there mm -hmm. and it was beautiful moon, but that's kind of helping though with the chance for some fog because it's allowing you don't have a blanket on top of us. So we, that's allowing temperatures to drop down. So we are seeing a little bit of patchy fog right now, but uh, yeah, not a bad view out there at the airport as we speak. However, these numbers have continued to drop just in places. It's not going to be real widespread, but you can see New Braunfels is down to three miles visibility, five Gonzales, five Burning Stage, Kerrville, a little bit uh, hints of it around Port S.A. as well as Pleasanton and a lot more down here to the southeast and just scattered uh, little bits of fog out there in portions of the hill country. So that's what we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of hours. And despite the fact that the humidity is actually lower, but again, temperatures are continuing to drop down somewhat. So we are in the uh, mid and some upper 50s around here. 57 is actually the normal low temperature, but we'll drop down a little bit more than that. And we've got dew points, which yes, we are well below 60. It's not bad out there, but as those Thermometer readings as the temperature drops closer to these dew points. That's why we're seeing some fog out there just because also given the fact we don't have a lot in the way of wind. Mold and oak are both on the high side. A little bit of pecan, a little bit of grass showing up. And this morning again, a couple of patches of fog here and there where there is fog. Probably going to be a little bit of mist as well and 56 degrees then. 77 later on today, so still not up to par. 80 is the normal high and humidity. Yeah, it's going to be there, but not too awfully humid, so actually a very nice spring day. How long will this last? And what about the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, sir. Police have issued an arrest warrant for the man who shot and killed a mother of three children last week on San Antonio's south side. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what the woman's family is saying about her and their message to the shooter. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And Gabriel Campos de Angel, the mother of those three children who was killed in that shooting last week, was described as humble and patient by her family. And now those three children are left grieving after that deadly shooting of their mother. This morning, the family is pleading for the suspected murderer to surrender to police before her funeral so they can have closure. 33-year-old Gabrielle was shot while picking up dinner on April 6th at Commercial and Southwest Military with her estranged husband when she was shot. San Antonio police say he was the intended target. The suspect wanted in connection with the murder is still on the run. Gabrielle worked with special needs children and is remembered for working hard to provide for her kids who are all under the age of 13 years old. Many in the community have poured in donations for those children. Her family says she never asked for much. He took a kind person and erased them from this world just because you could. And she didn't deserve that. And I think that you need to turn yourself in and make everything right. She was beautiful on the outside, on the inside. She was the most humble person, non-confrontational person you would have ever met. Police have issued an arrest warrant for Roland Gutierrez, who is in connection with that murder. On Friday, police say he evaded officers after an hour's long standoff at home on Ferndale and Humble. Now, Gabrielle's three children are under the age of 13 years old and will need much support moving forward. The family began funeral arrangements this week. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, have you seen this person? San Antonio bel police believe he stole from a business back in January. It happened on South Zarzamora Street. And officers did not say what they think the man shoplifted or how much it was worth, but they did say he showed a handgun while he was stealing. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Robbery Task Force unit, and that number is on your screen, 210-207-0300. 
Now to the horrifying moment when a Louisville, Kentucky bank employee opened fire at his workplace, killing at least five people and injuring nine others while live streaming the attack on social media. As ABC's M1 reports, police say officers immediately located the shooter when they arrived and are credited for saving countless lives. This morning, a mass shooting in Louisville, Kentucky, rocking the nation after a bank employee armed with a rifle opened fire at his workplace, killing at least five people, injuring several others. Troy Haste says the gunman walked into their crowded conference room and started shooting. And the lady next to me turned around and said, what the hell? And then he just started shooting. Whoever's next to me got shot and hit bloods on me from it. Haste ran and others scrambled to lock themselves in bathrooms and reportedly hide in the vault. I thought there was like something like dropping because they were doing some construction. I got up there and the guy was like, run, there's a shooter. Sources tell ABC News the gunman was recently given notice that he was going to be fired and that he left a note for his parents and friends indicating he planned to shoot up the bank. Police say the 25-year-old shooter was live streaming during the attack before officers arrived on the scene within three minutes of being dispatched, quickly killing the gunman in a shootout. And I want to thank them and all our other law enforcement officers for responding and doing their best to try to save some of my friends and many others. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says two of the victims were his close friends. Tommy Elliott helped me build my law career. Helped me become governor. Gave me advice on being a good dad. Two Louisville Metro police officers were also shot, including Officer Nicholas Wilt, shot in the head and now in critical but stable condition. We're also praying for the recovery of Officer Wilt, who heroically and rapidly entered the building. We have to take action. And overnight, a vigil remembering the victims, Thomas Elliott, Jim Tutt, Josh Barrick, Juliana Farmer, and Deanna Eckert. There have been at least 15 mass shootings since the start of April and 146 so far this year. That's 20 more than this time last year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. M1, ABC News, Washington. Plaintiffs in a medicinal abortion case have until tonight to respond to requests for hold on an order that would suspend FDA approval of an abortion drug. If no action is taken, the medication in question could become available nationwide by the end of the week. This is regarding the first pill on a two-dose regimen that could terminate a pregnancy through 10 weeks gestation. However, Texas federal judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled the FDA should suspend approval of the drug, saying the agency did not consider the trauma and stress women can suffer from ending a pregnancy. The White House said it will, quote, always follow the law in regard to if the FDA should ignore the ruling from the judge. The national emergency for COVID-19 is officially over more than three years after it was declared by then President Donald Trump. The White House says President Biden signed legislation on Monday that ended the national emergency for COVID-19. The White House had opposed the measure, but did say the president will sign it if it passed. The administration had planned to end the national emergency on May 11th, which is also when the public health emergency is set to expire. That still remains in effect for one more month. White House official says the administration has been winding down pandemic related authorities or over the past few months. Time check 438, 56 degrees. The season may be over for the San Antonio Spurs, but up next, Coach Pop had a few things to say about the team that kept its hope alive during a tough season. And checking out traffic this morning, we've got uh, some cars on the roads here or there. There's I-10 at Proband, no problems to report. And let's look out there with the live cam. Again, starting off cool in the 50s and a little fog here and there. So be careful out in the roadways. We're gonna get the latest from Mike in a bit. Four forty-one during Spurs Media Day before this season started, head coach Greg Popovich told the media that no one should bet on the Spurs to win the NBA title, and he was right. Spurs started off the season five and two, but lost their sixteen out of their next seventeen, and falling to six and eighteen, and that means bye-bye playoffs. Spurs dealt with a lot of injuries, numerous lineups, crunch time mistakes, etc. But through it all, they showed flashes of what's to come. And Pop says they never turned on one another. The character and personalities on the team uh, really meshed. They got along, they enjoyed each other, whether we're on the bus, on the plane, at dinner, uh, on the court. Uh, they were a, a wonderful group to be around, so it made it uh, palatable to lose 
because while we were doing that, uh, we knew we'd win now and then, uh, but their humor stayed big time alive. Their effort in shoot-arounds, practice, games, I think all the fans in San Antonio could see that. Uh, so they, we took great pride in it. Pop said now it's about keeping the guys they feel can be a spur, add a draft pick like usual, then progress, progress back to where they were before. Meanwhile, the NBA play-in tournament begins today, and the Timberwolves could be without center Rudy Gobert. That's because the team suspended him for one game for punching his teammate Kyle Anderson in the chest Sunday night during a timeout. The Athletic reports the innocent spilled over to the halftime locker room and that Anderson challenged Gobert and said he'd knock him out. We move forward. We want to win games. It is what it is. I mean, it, it ain't the first time someone has swung on me. It is what it is. We keep it in-house. I mean, I think our tempers just flared. That's all. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll, we'll speak about it and move on. We grown men. It is what it is. Let's move on. Timberwolves will play the Lakers tonight. The winner will earn the seventh seed in the Western Conference playoffs. The loser will face the winner of New Orleans OKC for the eighth and final seed in the West. Defending World Series champion Astros started a three-game series in Pittsburgh last night. Top of the second, Jordan Alvarez sends a base hit in left center. Mauricio Dubon scores, and so does Martin Maldonado, and the Astros lead four zip. Top of the fourth now. Houston really pours it on. Kyle Tucker chops a single to right. Alex Bregman and Jordan both score. Strohs rack up 13 hits and win it 8-2, improving to 5-6 and six on the season. Texas Rangers hammered the Kansas City Royals 11-2, banging out 11 hits in the process. Texas is 6-4 and, and first place in the American League West. And real quick, a side note this morning, Steph, we need to congratulate KSAT's Larry Ramirez. He was yes. officially announced as KSAT's new sports director yesterday. Yes, congrats to Larry. Yeah, it was very, very well deserved. Time now, 444 and 56 degrees for now. Coming up next, a warning from the FBI why they say you should not use those free charging stations in airports, hotels, or shopping centers. Welcome back. It's 447. The FBI is warning consumers not to use public charging stations, saying hackers are installing malware that can monitor software on your devices. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a warning from the FBI. It's travel season, and we're all out there trying to make sure that uh, when we're on the road, hotels, airports, malls, you name it, that our phones can stay charged. The concern is a public charging station. It's not necessarily monitored. The FBI issuing a tweet cautioning you against using free charging stations in airports, hotels, or shopping centers, warning you could be unwittingly giving a criminal all the information off your phone. And these public charging stations could be tampered with by people with nefarious intent. They could install malware or monitoring software on your device, which could allow them to see things like usernames, passwords, who you choose to bank with. That's all very problematic. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll share tips for keeping your devices safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with TransGuy looking at I-10 at ProVent where things are moving this morning. I didn't see too many problems on the way to work, just some sweepers on the roadways. Does it look like there's fuzz around some of the streetlights there? Yeah, a little it's bit. Possible. A little it's possible. Bit. And you, okay. based on what you're telling us, you wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Mm -hmm. No, because we are seeing a little bit of fog around parts of the area this morning. Mm -hmm. That, Despite the fact we've got the clear skies, again, that lets the heat kind of escape out into space. And so that gets the temperature dew points and all this together and... What's it, you know, comes out the other end, it's fog. So Good anyway, <laughs> take a look at uh, yesterday. We did have, now we had some of that uh, mist and drizzle, a couple of showers in the morning, and then uh, a couple of thunderstorms in the afternoon, especially out to the west as expected. And that storm south of Bigfoot cleared out to finally by the evening. And there were some blue skies in behind that, and then things cleared out quite nicely. And so that's what we're enjoying as of right now. And a nice view out there by the airport. But as far as visibility, it's down to just a half mile now in New Braunfels, three miles Gonzales. Bernie stages improved slightly. A hint of fog there, Port SA, and some down around Pleasanton. So this is going to continue. It's not going to be, you know, just thick fog widespread, but there's going to be those patches here and there where we are going to see some of the thicker fog. And it will, in at, 
times and in places get thicker as the morning rolls on. So we've got seven miles visibility, Rock Springs, U Valley, and uh, Beeville is at one mile as of right now. Temperatures are at or actually slightly below normal 57 being the normal low for us at the airport low 50s parts of the hill country but then look at how those temperatures are running neck and neck with these numbers the dew point so as with no blanket of clouds on top of us as temperatures begin to fall a little bit and get closer to these numbers plus we don't really have much of a breeze out there we are starting to see some fog and what's interesting is actually the dew points have dropped down a little bit compared to this time yesterday morning. There's hardly any wind and also what's keeping the the air fairly dry, not oppressively humid. I mean, if you're outside in the afternoons, it, yeah, you know, doing some yard work, something like that, it can be kind of humid, but we've got this northeasterly breeze and that's going to hold the humidity somewhat in check over the next couple of days. So temperatures, we may fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there this morning dropping down to 56 and again a couple of patches of fog then we'll see more sunshine today 72 at noon we're going to top off at 77 a little bit above yesterday still just slightly below normal normal high is now up to 80 and as far as the humidity the dew points you know you want to stay below 60 and we will see so much right here so it is going to be somewhat comfortable this afternoon we'll have a little bit of humidity around here tomorrow some clear skies overnight so we will deal with some patchy fog again tomorrow morning and then in the afternoon still not bad as far as the humidity is concerned but it will continue to kind of creep back in here as we go in toward the last latter part of the week in toward Friday as well as Saturday, but Sunday is going to be pretty nice. 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today. I'm going to go for mostly sunny. It's going to be a nice looking day out there. Fairly pleasant, lower humidity, 77. And then tomorrow we'll start off with some uh, patchy fog in the morning, make it up to 79 degrees. Then we start to creep into the 80s Thursday, Friday, more humid out there. You can see those low temperatures staying at 60, 66 on Saturday. Saturday is going to be Pretty darn hot and humid. We're going to be knocking at the door of 90 here in town. A couple of uh, evening and late night thunderstorms, maybe one or two on the strong side. Front comes on through here, so that's going to clear out the humidity for Sunday and Monday. That'd Big question good. is, does the humidity stay low for the start of Fiesta? Oh, mm -hmm. that's true. Well, that would be mm. nice. It would be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see though. Giant question mark hangs in the air. <laughs> 452, 56 degrees. Coming up next, how one of the biggest shows on streaming is expanding its universe. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 199, Fireball three. Daily four numbers, 7510, Fireball seven. Cash five, three, seven, 15, 16, 22. Your Texas two step, eight, 18, 20, 28. Bonus ball 16. And your Powerball numbers, 9, 10, 36, 46, 52, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. About five till the fifth and final season of Stranger Things may not be the actual end. Plus, singer Morgan Wallen returns to the top of the Billboard charts. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. One of the biggest shows on streaming is expanding its universe. Stranger Things may be coming to an end on Netflix with the upcoming fifth and final season, but the world will live on. We're told an animated series is coming on Netflix set within the world of Hawkins. No details yet on the new show. The fifth and final season of Stranger Things likely won't air until next year at the earliest. Kim Kardashian is arguably an American icon, and now she's joining an iconic TV franchise. She'll co-star in the upcoming season of American Horror Story, her most high-profile acting gig to date. Last night, back on top for Morgan Wallen. The song returns to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. It's also number one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. The last time a solo male was number one on both charts at the same time was 1981, when Eddie Rabbit did it with I Love a Rainy Night. Wallen's album, One Thing at a Time, is also number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. Each understand I'm gonna love you till the very end. Speaking of popular songs, Jack Black's Princess Peach song, Peaches, from the Super Mario Brothers movie, is going viral. Peaches! Peaches! And Variety says it will be Oscars eligible. And maybe she'll light her birthday candles with a dragon. HBO's House of the Dragon star Millie Alcock is 23 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. Los Angeles.
457, 57 degrees. A prosecutor says a mother accused in the triple murder of her two youngest children was willing to, quote, remove any obstacle in her way to get what she wants, end quote. Now, up next, what's next in the case of Lori Vallow, Daybell, and her husband. And here in San Antonio, a woman and two children are in surgery after a domestic violence shooting last night on the north side. What police are saying this morning about the man they took into custody. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Sky. It appears to be some kind of uh, incident there, I guess a stalled vehicle or something. So there's one lane still moving there at Loop 410. But we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos, who just walked in the studio this morning. We'll check with him after the break. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two children and a woman shot at a home on San Antonio's north side. Just ahead, what San Antonio Police's chief is saying about the incident this morning. And the trial of an Idaho mother accused of murdering her two children continues today, while her defense lawyer says she is not guilty. Coolish this morning in the mid to upper 50s out there with some clouds and some fog. Be on the lookout. Mike will show us where that's happening coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, April the 11th. Hope you had a good Monday uh, for me. I guess it just the sun came out later, but it was just very overcast for most of the day. I thought it was going to rain right away. Mike, how much of a issue is the fog this morning? Not bad. I mean, there, it's thick in some spots and there are hints of it in places. I'm going to show you the map in just a second, but we're just going to have to be on the lookout over the next couple of hours, as is usually the case. It tends to get thicker as we approach sunrise. 58 degrees right now and got a lot of humidity relative to that temperature. Now the dew points at 56, so that in itself, you know, you're below 60, so that is comfortable. But as those numbers, the 58 and the 56, stay real close together like that and you don't really Really have any wind to deal with. That's why we are starting to see some patchy fog around the area. We're going to make it up to 77 later on today, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Still not quite up to where we should be this time of year. The normal high is 80. No change in the aquifer yesterday. It's a push, so we'll take that. And mold and oak are both still on the high side. A little bit of pecan, a little bit of grass out there. Here's what is uh, showing up as far as visibility or the lack thereof. Now, New Braunfels was just at a half mile a couple of minutes ago. Now it's back up to three miles, three at Gonzales. Pretty good in and around town. You go out I-10, you're going to run into a little bit more of that fog. And then heading down 37 toward uh, Pleasanton, a little bit of fog. So again, there are hints of it most everywhere, but it's not just pea soup, although we will have to again watch out for that over the next couple of hours. So cool and actually this is a normal low temperature though at 57 degrees. We'll drop maybe another degree or two in the next few hours and patchy fog and plenty of sunshine today. Upper 70s going to be a nice day and humidity is still going to be held in check, which is the nice thing. We've got this little breeze coming in here out of the uh, northeast, so that'll be a, a fairly pleasant, nice spring afternoon. Now tomorrow we'll have a little bit of fog again. It is going to start to get slightly warmer, warmer still Thursday and Friday. A lot of sunshine tomorrow and a couple of extra clouds on Thursday. Then we're going to have a lot more humidity, a lot more clouds Friday and going into Saturday, and it's just going to be downright hot Saturday. A lot of folks going to be well up into the 90s on Saturday. A couple of uh, thunderstorms late on on Saturday and then a front moves through, so it's going to be really nice Sunday and Monday. Details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Well, 503, it looks like we have some flashing lights out there at 410 at FM 78. Let's get a quick look at Transguide. Uh, we can see at least one lane is blocked right now. We're going to get some information confirmed through Transguide because we know that there is some road work taking place, but it also appears that there could be a stall out there off Loop 410 southbound. So just be careful. We see a little bit of a delay picked up there on our map at 410 FM. Uh, pardon me, 410 Southbound at FM 78. A little bit of yellow and orange, so not necessarily a great way to start the Tuesday commute, but just make sure to watch out. Hopefully, we'll see some resolution pretty soon. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully, plenty of relief out there for drivers. If you plan on hitting the roads in the next few moments, we'll be talking about some active construction. As you can see, there's plenty of it there on our map. But for right now, travel times. Let's talk about that. I tend eastbound if you're heading in from Bernie should be about a 24 commit 24 minute commute to the Alamo City 25 minutes along 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Bulverde this early and about a 26 minute drive time for our friends that are heading in from 35 southbound in New Braunfels but let's get it back here on Transguide again 410 at FM 78 we'll work to get some details confirmed but for right now just use some caution it looks like at least one lane is being impacted Mark 
Thank you, sir. Two toddlers and a woman shot at a home on the city's north side last night. Two other children in that home narrowly escaping the shooter. It happened in the Oak Park Northwood community near New Braunfels and Robin Hood Lane, and that's just north of Alamo Heights. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the very latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And unfortunately, this was a domestic violent shooting. A woman and those two children are in surgery overnight after after they were shot last night on San Antonio's north side. That's according to Police Chief William McManus. So police were called to the 500 block of Robin Hood Place around 7 p.m. for that shooting. McManus says officers found a 28 year old woman on the sidewalk who had been shot. They also found that two children ages one and two had been shot. The police chief says two boys ages eight and 11 who were also in the home during that time had enough insight and were able to escape the house. One broke a sliding glass door and the other broke through a window in a bedroom. The injured woman and children were taken to a local hospital for surgery. Chief McManda says he was unsure if the family had domestic violence calls before, but says this situation is frustrating. This is infuriating. With, with all of the resources and effort that we've put into assisting domestic violence victims and trying to prevent these things from happening, uh, here we are tonight with a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a 28-year-old mom shot by her intimate partner. Their conditions of the three victims are unclear at this time. McManus says the two boys who escaped seem to be in good shape. Police took a 50-year-old man into custody about a mile away from the home who McManus says shot the woman and those two children. Now, the chief had a strong message about the effort that goes into preventing domestic violence, saying, quote, it affects everyone and anyone. There are no class barriers, end quote. When we get updates on the conditions of the woman and those toddlers who were shot, we will update you on air and online. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, we are getting a first look at the man that was in a five-hour standoff with Bear County law enforcement yesterday. Now, the standoff ended peacefully when the kids walked out safely, officially followed by their father, 32-year-old Marlon Avita Reyes. He was immediately arrested, charged with assault strangulation for the incident that started that standoff. Bear County Sheriff's deputies got to the house around 4.30 yesterday morning, and the mother of the two children escaped and called for help. Extra law enforcement also surrounded the area because the house is across the street from East Central High School. The district sent parents a message saying the cannabis was not involved in the incident, but was locking doors out of extra precaution. The school returned to normal after the scene was cleared. Nada, Idaho and the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell. She's accused of using a doomsday religious cult to justify killing her children. And as ABC's Rihanna and Alley reports, prosecutors are expected to call more than 200 witnesses at the trial. This morning, prosecutors are laying out their case against an Idaho mother accused of murdering her two children. The defendant, Lori Vallow Daybell, used money, power, and sex, or the promise of those things, to get what she wanted. Lori Vallow and her husband, Chad Daybell, allegedly killed Lori's children, JJ and Ty Lee, as part of a religious cult preparing for the end of the world. They're also charged in the death of Chad's late wife, Tammy. Both pleaded not guilty. During opening statements at Lori's trial, prosecutors revealed Tammy died of asphyxiation and said Chad and Lori were planning to spend her life insurance money. Tammy died at the hands of another. The cause of Tammy's death was initially ruled as natural causes, but investigators exhumed her body as they gathered evidence in J.J. and Ty Lee's death. The children's bodies were found buried on Chad's property after J.J.'s grandmother, Kay Woodcock, reported them missing. Woodcock was the first witness called to the stand yesterday. She says only 17 days after Tammy died, she signed into an Amazon account that Lori had access to and saw searches for wedding dresses and rings. In divorce papers from Lori's previous marriage, Marriage, her ex-husband said Lori thought she was a godlike figure who believed her kids were zombies. But the defense yesterday insisted Lori has a happy-go-lucky personality. Lori was such a, a good, responsible mother to her two children. She believes in life after death, and she believes she will see her deceased family, including her children, again. When there's lack of evidence, the law calls it not guilty. 
You said you would be fair and impartial. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 509, 57 degrees. YouTube Premium customers are getting some new features. Just ahead, we're going to tell you about the added perks that includes higher quality video. The next first look at a big announcement later today regarding the 2023 KSAP Pigskin Classic at the Alamo Dome. Let's look out there with a live cam. Kind of foggy in parts here and there. 57 degrees, but we expect things to warm up today even more than yesterday. We're checking with Mike when we get back. We have a big announcement this morning at 10 a.m. at the Alamo Dome. That's when we make public the high school football teams involved in the 2023 KSEP Pigskin Classic at the Alamo Dome. So we will stream the 10 a.m. presser live on KSEP.com, KSEP Plus, BGC, and the KSEP News app and YouTube. Just like last year, we will bring you all the details on air and online to get you ready for the games. Now, our second annual KSEP Pigskin Classic will be even bigger than last season. Be sure to tune in later this morning at 10 a.m. And check this out. We want to say congrats to a local singer who's turning some heads on American Idol. That's right. Dawson Rice, a.k.a. Dawson Wayne, has made it to the top 26. American Idol typically takes the top 24, but the competition was expanded as a surprise during Monday night's episode. So Wayne graduated from Reagan High School back in 2020. 514, 57 degrees. Up next, how Domino's is making it easier to order pizza from your car. And speaking of cars, there are some cars on the, uh, cars on the road at 410 and FM 78, flashing lights in that area. Stephen has eyes on what's going on out there. We'll talk to him coming up. Ten years from today, Lisa Schneider will become the undisputed leader of a ginormous pack of dogs. Rescue dogs, to be exact. A second act made possible by the career reskilling courses Lisa's already taking now with AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does so she can finally run with the big dogs and the small dogs who just think they're big dogs. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Had enough? No, arthritis. Here, aspicream arthritis. Prescription strength reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the Asper cream. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. 517 Twitter Circle users are reporting their private posts are appealing, uh, appearing rather on all of the platform. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, you may want to reconsider posting those private messages on Twitter. A feature called Twitter Circles is only supposed to reach a select group of people, but users say their posts are showing up on For You timelines, which means those private tweets may not be so private. Twitter has not commented on the reports. YouTube Premium users have more features to choose from. Subscribers now have higher quality video for web and iOS users. There's also support for co-watching videos on FaceTime through Apple's SharePlay. And finally, you can now order Domino's Pizza using Apple CarPlay. Users can quickly place their favorite pickup order by tapping on the Domino's app. To customize your pizza, tap the call to order button and give the store instructions using your voice. A great way to save on delivery charges if you need the dough. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. It was cute. <laughs> You're on the fence? What about you? No? Well, well, I'm on the fence. You, you kind of, I, I don't know. That was an effort. Yeah. I think you did okay. Nothing. But interesting app, yeah. though. I mean, uh, yeah. it, uh, it's the future, right? But just make sure you're uh, only using it when you're in a safe space. True. Yeah. True. You don't want to be ordering like too specific and get too involved in your order. No. When you're driving. Uh, no, especially when we have flashing lights out there. Uh, you know, today that seems to be the case. Uh, we do have some road work actually happening along 410 at FM 78. Uh, I did get some information earlier uh, reported that it was a stall, but it looks like that just may be construction. We do have a stall, though, off of 410 uh, at Exchange Parkway. We'll get to that direction in just a
just a moment, but just take a peek there at 37 at 410 90 at Nogalitos. Thankfully, the commute is shaping up to be a pretty decent one, but we're watching things very closely. Now that's all that we talked about is right there in the southbound lanes at Exchange Parkway, and it's not causing any issues. But as always, make sure that you watch out for those first responders. It is uh, pretty early in the morning, so we want to make sure we give them plenty of room to get the situation resolved. But I do want to take you over here where we have some concrete, uh, re pardon me, resurfacing work taking place at 410 southbound at FM 78. That is why we see that left lane uh, that is blocked there, causing a little bit of a buildup, but nothing too drastic. I do want to get your attention, though, to some of that road work that is taking place in and around the Alamo City. One of the areas we're keeping a very close eye on is right here off of US 181 in Wilson County. Now, this is outside of uh, Bear County, obviously, but we want to make sure you're aware if your travels take you through there because cable installation will take us all the way up to Tuesday, April 18th. Now, this work begins today at 8 in the morning, should wrap at 4 in the afternoon. Various lane closures in both directions from Bear County line to FM 536. Plan your commute ahead of time. I just updated the list of current closures on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. We'll get a QR code coming up a little bit later on. There it is. Thank you very much, directors. But <coughs> again, plan your commute ahead of time. Uh, Mike, last week uh, was the rain. Patchy fog in the area this week. Yeah, we've got, uh, I was just thinking about that ring because I still need to cut my grass in the backyard, which I'm not complaining about by, by any stretch. Uh, and we did have a little bit of rain around yesterday, and then the skies kind of cleared out. Yes, it was sort of Seattle weather starting off in the morning, but uh, for a lot of folks, it turned out to be a beautiful evening. And then those clear skies have continued for the most part overnight, and we've got a lot of clearing out there right now. And that's helping out, though, with some fog because that's allowing temperatures to uh, drop down. The heat escapes out into space. So we're now back down to it was just up to three miles of uh, what 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago in New Braunfels, now back down to a mile and three quarters, three miles Gonzales, little thicker Pleasanton, Burning Stage has dropped down ever so slightly, and then hints of fog around the area. Junction has some of the thickest uh, way out there to the northwest at just three quarters of a mile. So this will be something we watch over the course of the next few hours, and where there's fog, there may also be just a little mist, so the roads could be damp. Temperatures are in the, uh, call it mid-50s on average. We're at 58, we actually went up one notch. 57 is the normal low, so right where we should be. There's not much of a breeze out there, so we've got clear skies. We've got very light wind and, relatively speaking, a lot of humidity. That's why we are seeing some of that fog. Temperatures will drop another uh, degree or so in the next few hours, and then we will see some sunshine and a lot more as the day rolls on. 72 at noon, 77 for a high temperature today. Just a couple of notches above yesterday, and then the trend is going to be to warm up a couple of more notches as we go into tomorrow as well as Thursday and then heading into the first part of the weekend. All right, here's long-range computer model, and we will have uh, plenty of sunshine today. The humidity is going to be pleasant, so it's going to be a really nice spring day and tomorrow about the same situation. Like I said, warmer. We'll start off with some fog in the morning. A few more clouds come in here Thursday, Friday late. There's a chance for a stray shower or two around here, maybe in the overnight hours. Again, this model kind of you know, broad brushes things when it paints it in. But then Saturday, a lot of clouds, very hot, very humid on Saturday, and there's a front moving through. And so that's going to touch off a few showers and thunderstorms late Saturday night and in the wee hours Sunday morning. But we clear out after that, and Sunday's going to be just a fantastic day. So if you want to make some outdoor plans over the weekend, Sunday's going to be the day to do it. 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it all the way up to 77. Still not up to the normal, which is 80 this time of year, lots of sunshine. Humidity is going to be uh, on the pleasant side later on today. Tomorrow, more patchy fog in the morning. We get up to 79, up to 80 on Thursday. More clouds. Humidity is going to start to work in here again on Friday. And maybe a shower thunderstorm late Friday. Better chance late Saturday. Hot and humid on Saturday. And then that front moves through here. And very nice Sunday as well as Monday. Little hint, though, as it's looking right now. That less humid ain't gonna be sticking around next week okay. for the start of Fiesta. But it's Fiesta. I mean, translation of Fiesta is humid, isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, maybe not all of it, hopefully. Yeah. And the other good news is uh, we should be winding down on oak season around here. Oh, yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Mike. Good talk. 523, 57 degrees. Okay, coming up next, Jack Black, musical plea to Chris Peace Plus director Adrian Lynn looks back at Flashdance 40 years later. 526, the Super Mario Brothers movie turned the popular video game franchise into a blockbuster animated film. And now it has a viral music video. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute.
beach You're so cool And with my star we're gonna rule Jack Black pours his heart out, or rather his Super Mario Brothers movie character Bowser's heart out, in Peaches, a love ballad for Bowser's unrequited crush, Princess Peach. The music video has more than 5 million views on YouTube in just a few days. The movie's soundtrack is available now on digital, and a special vinyl 7-inch single is due out later this year. Flashdance is 40. Director Adrian Lyne's 1983 romantic drama dazzled audiences with its music, dance sequences, and young star Jennifer Beals, even if critics weren't as impressed. But what was lovely was that people would ring me up and say, well, you know, they're dancing. They're dancing in the aisles, um, in, the, in the movie theaters, you know, in, in like... Um, Times Square or wherever. Flashdance wound up the third highest grossing movie of the year. To mark its 40th anniversary, the film is out for the first time on 4K Ultra HD. What a feeling. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 57 degrees. The clock is ticking for a popular abortion drug. Up next, how the ruling by a federal judge in North Texas could make it unavailable by the end of the week. Plus a warning about those free cell phone charging stations at places like airports why the FBI is now saying you should avoid them. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the COVID-19 national emergency is officially over. But however, the public health emergency is still going on. Our Sarah Costa will join us to explain why and when it could end this year. A federal judge here in Texas says the FDA should suspend approval of an abortion drug. Now the White House is fighting back ready to fight. This is going to be a long fight. We understand this. We stand by FDA's approval. Up next, why the drug could become unavailable nationwide by the end of the week. And let's look out there with live cam. We are starting at 57 degrees and a little patchy fog maybe here and there. We are going to see the sun, we believe, we're going to check in with Mike, a lot sooner than we did yesterday. I sure hope the sun comes up later. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> 531 on your Tuesday. It is April 11th. Thanks for joining us. We're going to check in with Stephen mm -hmm. in just a minute. But yeah. Yes, we will see more sunshine uh, later Good. on today. It took a long time. It did, yesterday. A, and some folks uh, had a couple of showers yesterday afternoon. Then it finally uh, popped on through there. But yeah, today is going to be... Overall, just a really nice spring day. Humidity, which is, it's not bad this morning, although relative to the temperature, it is kind of high. So therefore, we do have some patchy fog around here. So what we have going on is temperature of 58, dew points 56. Now, just in itself, when you're below 60, that's fine. But that's the dew point, the relative humidity between those two is very, very high. We don't have much of a breeze out there. We've got some clear skies. So what that is equating to is a little bit of patchy fog around here. Gonzales, New Braunfels now is back up to three miles visibility. A hint of it there at Randolph, Port SA going up uh, 10 in toward the hill country. Got a little bit of fog there and just some of it sort of scattered about the area. Nothing too thick as of right now, but got to watch out for the next couple of hours. Mold and oak are still on the high side. Pecan and grass are low and throughout the rest of today we'll have some clouds around this morning, mostly clear skies, but then those patches of fog and 72 degrees then at noon. High temperature up to 77, mostly sunny skies. Humidity is going to be, again, comfortable. Like I said, a nice spring day and then a lot of clear skies tonight. But then once again, that sets us up for a little bit of patchy fog around here tomorrow. Enjoy today and tomorrow. It's going to be a bit more humid on Thursday, a few more clouds and then a lot of humidity. And we do have some rain chances, though, as we head in toward the first part of the weekend. Hot start to the weekend, but we'll salvage the latter half. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big going on out there, Stephen? You know, Mike, I wouldn't say it uh, that we have anything big going on, but things that we want folks to be aware of. So we want to go ahead and just start with a quick rotation and a look around town. There's 1604 at Pat Booker. You can really just see the commute is getting on by without any trouble. But notice that we do have a few folks out there getting their morning started early. So just watch out because it does look like we also have some stall vehicles to talk about. It's the same one that we told you about a little bit earlier, 410 Southbound at Exchange Parkway. Now, the good news is, guys, this isn't really causing any issues, but let's make sure that anytime you see those hazard lights on or flashing lights, that we move over or slow down. Now, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't look like we're seeing much progress here with the resurfacing work that's taking place at Loop 410 southbound right there at FM 78. Notice a little bit of a buildup.
slip out there. One lane is blocked at this time, so we want to make sure that we give those textile crews plenty of room to get the job done. But let's go ahead and just give you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully, a little bit more relief here. Plenty of construction to talk about, but we'll get to that a little later on. Travel times right now to the Alamo City aren't looking too bad. Still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton along 37 northbound. Right now, 27 minutes is what you can expect. About half an hour on US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castorville. And that arrival from Lytle should take you about 17 minutes to the Alamo City. But back here on, on Trans Guide 37 at Houston, things are off to a quiet but yet still busy start in some areas of town. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and have an update on other road closures that will be coming up a little later on guys. Plaintiffs in a medicinal abortion case have until tonight to respond to requests for a hold on an order that would suspend FDA approval of an abortion drug. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, if no action is taken, the medication in question could become unavailable nationwide by the end of the week. The clock is ticking for mufapristone. That's the first pill in the two-dose regimen that can terminate a pregnancy through 10 weeks gestation. This is a, a pill that's been around for more than 20 years, I believe 22 years. It's in, it's, uh, it is, uh, it's been used in 60 countries. However, Texas federal judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled the FDA should suspend approval of the drug, saying the agency didn't consider the trauma and stress women can suffer from ending a pregnancy. We are ready to fight. This is going to be a long fight. We understand this. We stand by FDA's approval. Dozens of officials from biotech and pharmaceutical companies signed an open letter backing the FDA's right to, quote, regulate safe, effective medicines for every American. Republican Representative Nancy Mace agrees, even though she considers herself pro-life. I think that that 90 percent would be OK with listening to the FDA rather than a judge who used an old law that was determined unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. As the legal matter over the judge's ruling lies in limbo, abortion access varies significantly across the U.S. Here in Texas, you know, we have a heart bill, a heartbeat bill that was passed. And I think it's important that states uh, dictate their futures and we have to have the courts uphold these. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Former President Donald Trump is expected to sit for a deposition Thursday in a civil case against him. The lawsuit was filed by the New York Attorney General. He uses Trump and his children of being involved in financial fraud at the Trump Organization that lasted more than a decade. Trump was previously deposed in the investigation in August when he invoked his Fifth Amendment rights to not answer more than 400 questions. The case against Trump is seeking $250 million and a ban on his ability to operate a business in the state of New York. It is set to go to trial in October. Prosecutors in Virginia say they will bring charges against the mother of a six-year-old boy accused of shooting his first grade teacher. The mother, Deja Taylor, will face child neglect and child endangerment charges. A lawyer for Taylor says she will turn herself in later this week. Her son will not face charges. Police say the six-year-old brought a gun to Rich Neck Elementary School last January. He then shot his teacher, Abby Zwerner. She suffered wounds to her hand and her chest. Now, Zorner has sued the school district. The suit says school administrators and the school board were aware of the boy's history of random violence and did not take proactive steps when they became aware he might have a gun at school. A disturbing discovery connected to the Las Vegas mass shooting that killed 58 people and injured over 500 others back in 2017. New letters show the gunman Stephen Paddock was planning the attacks as far back as 2014, and he repeatedly told a friend about a project that would occur in multiple cities across the U.S. The shooting happened at an outdoor country music concert at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Vegas. Authorities say Paddock fired on the crowd of 22,000 people from the 32nd floor of the hotel. Late last month, the FBI released documents showing Paddock may have harbored resentment over how he and other high rollers were treated by the casinos. Right now, 538, 57 degrees. And still ahead, we're gonna tell you how much a popular e-cigarette maker has agreed to pay after being accused of deceptive advertising. Outside with live cam, Mike has us on alert for a little bit of fog this morning, especially in the outlying areas. We'll get an update on your Tuesday forecast. Straight ahead. Take yourself out for a ball game today because the San Antonio Missions will have its home opener. And there will be some famous faces at the game tonight. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what we can expect. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
lots of famous faces. Okay, some of those big names include David Robinson, Nolan Ryan, and Manu Ginobili. They're all scheduled to attend the event tonight. The San Antonio Missions Baseball Club says they will celebrate its home opener with festivities highlighting the pregame events will be Mayor Ron Nirenberg throwing out the ceremonial first pitch to David Robinson. A flyover is expected to take place prior to the first pitch of the game. The flyover is provided by the Texas Air National Guard and will include two F 16s flown by the 149th Fighter Wing and 182nd Fighter Squadron gunfighters. Gates will open to the public at 530 with the first pitch currently scheduled for 7.05 p.m. upon entering Nelson Wolf Stadium on April 11th. Fans will be treated to live mariachi music from local group Mariachi Damas de Jalisco as well as local balloon artists from Elite Artistry. So children can receive complimentary balloon animals during the game. Stevenson Middle School will be there performing the national anthem and members of the South Texas Heat Baseball Academy will be standing on the field with the missions prior to the game. So over the weekend, the missions lost their season opener series to Tulsa, beating them out two games to one. The missions will face the Frisco Rough Riders tonight. Mark and Steph. And that series continues into the weekend, including uh, SFA night for alums and fans on Friday evening out at the Wolf. Good luck to the missions this season. Good luck. Time now, 543 and 57 degrees for now. A lot of people waiting at airports like to take advantage of those free charging stations for cell phones. Up next, why the FBI is warning you, you should avoid them. And a quick look at the roads with Transkai. Looks a little foggy there on that camera at 1604 at Kitty Hawk, but things are moving right now. Also looking good there at I-10 at 35 and I-35 at Olympia. We're going to get a check in with Steven in just a minute. And welcome back. It's 546 in your morning consumer headlines. A popular e-cigarette maker, Juul, has agreed to pay out millions of dollars to settle a lawsuit accusing the company of deceptive advertising. That company will pay nearly $8 million after it was accused of using unfair and deceptive practices in the ads and marketing for its products. The lawsuit accused Juul of misleading customers about the nicotine strength in its products and of targeting teenagers through social media by using celebrities, popular bloggers, and Influencers. Travelers take note, those free charging stations at airports may not be safe as you think. The FBI is now warning people about something called juice jacking through public charging or USB ports in airports, even hotels and malls. The FBI in Denver says that bad actors have figured out how to use the ports to put malware and monitoring software on people's cell phones and other devices. Officials advise just carrying your own charger and using a regular electrical outlet instead. And time now is 547. The roads are looking okay from this angle, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yep, and some progress as well, guys. Uh, we have been talking about uh, some road work off of FM 78. We'll get to that in just a moment, but let's get a quick look at your commute right now at 90 at Nogalitos. Not a bad shot, and actually uh, not a bad way to start the morning here at 1604 at Kitty Hawk. Just some smooth sailing traffic right now, but uh, looking like uh, some of these transguide cameras have a little bit of that patchy fog Mike has been talking about. So remember, take it easy out there. We're getting busier minute by minute, but I'd say right now you're still in the clear. Uh, remember, we had that resurfacing work here at 410 Southbound at FM 78. That looks like it's already wrapped up, but there's still some residual traffic making its way through the area. Well, this work will take us all the way up till April 14th. More on that a little bit later, but as we give you a wide look at the metropolitan area, as I said, a lot of green out there, but still plenty of construction to be on the lookout for. So another area we want to remind you of is 1604 here on the east side of Bear County. We actually have cable installation, the same work that we're seeing over there in Wilson County. Now this will actually wrap up uh, on Tuesday, April 18th. It begins at eight in the morning, should wrap in four in the afternoon. Various lane closures this time in both directions from FM 78 to Hanover Cove. But as I mentioned, we updated the list of current closures on the website, ksat.com slash traffic. There is a lot going on in and around the Alamo City, so it's always good to know before you go. But for right now, the commute is going along just fine. Just fine. Just fine. And all those patients look very good. Yeah. Except I, those the little fuzz. A little bit of fuzz yeah. in some areas, Mike. We'll have to watch out for more fuzz. So <laughs> Okay. I guess that's the best way to describe it when you see a little bit of fuzz. I was just thinking fuzz on my on the face. Oh yeah. no. Did you get that's, that this morning? That's again? November. I, I did. I did. I was November. Like, hey. uh, yesterday we still have <laughs> it's funny, I was thinking about that over the last <laughs> week because I didn't shave all week. Anyway, uh, yesterday we did have a few leftover showers and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms late in the afternoon. One place in particular, right around Bigfoot, and then 
Sun came out and as you can see, it is just sneaking down in behind right there on the horizon. Great picture there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, we do have a lot of clear skies around, but we also have some fog to deal with. So out there in Kerrville, it's dropped down to two miles. Three New Braunfels. Gonzalez has dropped a little bit. It's still pretty good in and around the metropolitan area, but some around Pleasanton, some around Port SA. So we're going to have to watch it in places where you usually start to see it. you get it in Pleasanton then it tends to kind of creep a little bit further north northward northward up toward uh, Stinson and then New Braunfels always tends to kind of head down 35 a little bit in toward Randolph. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, out there. Junction Rock Springs four miles like I said to at Kerrville. So not anything real real thick, but just some of it out there and where there is fog, maybe some mist on the roads as well. 50s all around the area, averaging mid 50s. We're at 58, normal low 57, right where we should be. Not much, if any, wind out there. So we've got some clear skies and we've got very, very light wind and relative to the temperature, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So that's why we are seeing some of this fog trying to pop up. So temperatures will stay pretty steady fluctuated degree or two over the next couple of hours and we will start to see more sunshine where there's not fog this morning and then a lot more throughout the rest of the day 72 at noon and we'll top off at 77 later on this afternoon wind is not going to be um, too big of an, an issue primarily out of the east to northeast and that's going to continue to keep the relatively lower humidity around here. So it's going to be a very nice spring afternoon. Same thing tomorrow. We will just barely creep up to 79 degrees. Normal high is 80. We hit that on Thursday. Humidity starts to come back in here by Friday and especially Saturday. Look at that Saturday going for 89. A lot of folks are going to be into the 90s and we're going to have the humidity to deal with. But then temperatures drop back down for Sunday and Monday and you look at the lows. Saturday 66 degrees. That means a lot of humidity because we're not doesn't allow the temperatures to drop down that much. But then we get into Sunday and Monday and it's going to be a lot more pleasant around here. So forecast goes like this today, specifically at noon. We will make it up to 72 degrees, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature is going to stay just a degree or two right below normal 77. A lot of sunshine, very nice spring afternoon with that humidity, which is going to be comfortable. Tomorrow, another very nice day. 80 on Thursday, bit more humid and especially Friday. A couple of showers going to be possible late Friday. Not a great chance, but a better chance of rain later Saturday in the evening and overnight hours. A few, uh, perhaps even some stronger thunderstorms. Then that front's going to move through and get rid of the humidity for a couple of days. Looks like just a couple of days as of right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe next go around. Because I was, because I was thinking it was like, ooh, ooh, we're gonna have another front coming through just to start a fiesta. No, it's, no, it doesn't well. look like it now. So maybe, maybe the end of fiesta. Hopefully. <laughs> Something. Thank you, Mike. 552, 57 degrees. Nicholas Cage sinks his teeth into his latest role as Count Dracula. Up next, a special first look at the new movie opening this week. Coming up here on GMA, the heat from here in the desert all the way to the northeast this week and a new study on sea level rise. Tulane University bringing us interesting information about the natural variability and how much it has impacted storms like Ian or Michael on the Gulf Coast and some parts of the southeast with their king tides. On top of all of that, we have to get into the deadly rampage that happened at a Kentucky bank. Uh, we've learned that the death toll is climbing overnight and also we'll get into the investigation. And then new warnings about those free charging stations for your phone at airports, shopping centers, and other public places when you shouldn't use it. That and so much more right here on GMA. To most, I am known simply as Redfield's boss. Nicholas Cage goes full vampire in the horror comedy Renfield. I am Dracula. I always was a fan of Lon Chaney Sr. and what he could do working from the outside in terms of makeup in and uh, wanted to transform myself physically in a movie uh, in, a, in a very big way. And it's remarkable how much your look can help with a performance. The first time we saw him as Dracula, that was, that was incredible. Um, he looks so much like a weird combination of Christopher Lee and Bela Lugosi just when, you know, uh, just as a human being when he's in, in the costume. My boss gave me this power. In return, 
return, I tend to his needs, including care, feeding. The movie takes a modern approach at examining the dysfunctional relationship between Dracula and Renfield. Dracula had been done a thousand different ways, and I wanted to try and find like a, a unique angle uh, from which to view the character from. Renfield, this is codependency 101. That's a very serious topic within this film, is this codependent relationship and how these these two characters rely on each other, but also kind of have this quite abusive, toxic environment that they've been living in for maybe a hundred years together. Now, let's eat. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, the city of San Antonio has a new website to help you find affordable housing, how it works and helps you with your budget. Plus, the San Antonio Book Festival is just days away. We're introducing you to one author who's embracing his culture and heritage through poetry. And up next, medication called Narcan could mean the difference between life and death. A local doctor tells us how it can stop people from overdosing and how you can get it for free. And tracking traffic around the Alamo City metro area this morning, Stephen Cavazos is here and he is updating everybody on uh, any traffic troubles around town. Right now you're looking live at I-37 and Loop 410. Be right back.